The first type of post that you're going to write is called a response post. A response post is a post that's between 1,000 and 1,200 words. This post is the type of post that is made to answer a specific question, like how much can a regular drywall nail hold? This response post type is meant to write 1,000 to 1,200 words about a specific answer. We've developed a blog post recipe to help you. Um, it's a formula to help you write the post in the best way possible. Um, that both helps Google see that you have a lot of value in your post and that also provides a really good user experience for the reader. And so we're going to walk through just the very basics, high level of the post recipe before we dive in and actually start writing your first post. I should also say the other type of post that you'll be introduced to in the future is called a staple post. The staple post is 2,000 to 2,500 words. And both of these different types of posts could answer singular questions, but the staple post also uh, can be used in a lot of different ways to do list type posts, it can do um, instructions like how to or lists like best places to visit during the winter, that type of post, anything that's going to be a larger, meatier content. You're going to learn more about staple posts later, but for now, let's focus on response posts. So here we have the blog post recipe. Now, the blog post recipe, as I mentioned earlier, is best used for response posts. It starts with a title. You should have the title on your hit list and you should put the title in the back end of WordPress exactly how it's written on your hit list. Then you'll tee up the target, the answer target, which is just a few lead in sentences, which may, gives you um, authority in the user's eyes or the reader's eyes, and it helps them see you as an expert. Next up, you write your answer target. Your answer target is just the one paragraph answer that nails the question and it makes it so the user could at that point walk away from your post with a great answer unless they're interested in reading more which comes up next the next section is the read on section which will encourage the reader to keep learning more because you're going to give a deeper dive as the post goes on after you do this part you are going to go into the meat of your article now the meat of your article is going to be very based on the research that you did before you started writing. When you're writing a response post, we always give 30 minutes to do research, dedicated specifically so that by the time you start writing, you are knowledgeable on the topic. So you, the meat of your article will start with your first subheading. Your first subheading should be directly correlated with the question asked and that the answer given in the answer target. So the first subheading should be very on point, answering the question that was originally answered in the post. You should then have additional subheadings, two, maybe three subheadings that give also very relevant information that could answer the next question that the user had. Now, you need to make sure that your subheadings are very, very related and that they are all both all of them on topic. You don't want to do a subheading that's totally out of left field. You want it to be something that's very, very on topic. For example, if I was writing a post, best running shoes for trail running, I would want my subheadings not only to talk about trail running, not only to talk about running shoes, but I really want each subheading to address running shoes and trail running so that it's very, very on topic. That's it. Um, your last subheading should draw up some sort of conclusion and you're going to be ready to edit and finish your post, add images, any sort of media. And that's really the high level blog post recipe. All right, it's about time that we start writing your first post.